they lived, they worked, they died, now they're being remembered forever. Irvin McDaniel Jr. is not related to those buried beneath his feet. Still, he considers them his ancestors. They're part of me because, you know, after it flows to me, these hands is sort of celebrating, you know, the ancestors by playing a rhythm and playing a tune. Soon, his hands will be part of a tangible monument to those forebears. The 72-year-old retired city planner was chosen to represent one of 36 people, most likely enslaved, whose remains were uncovered during excavation for a performing arts center in downtown Charleston. But the Anson Street African Burial Ground project is about more than just art, or even memory. It is on the cutting edge of a movement to use ancient DNA to fill in the gaps for people who have been robbed of their history. This is a way of restoring dignity to individuals that should have always had this dignity all along. We're bringing their memory back to life. The term ancient DNA likely conjures images of Neanderthals and woolly mammoths. But it is helping scientists to flesh out the stories of people marginalized during more recent times. Nowhere is that more poignant than in Charleston, a hub of the transatlantic slave trade. Of the millions of Africans abducted between the 16th and 19th centuries, about 175,000 are believed to have disembarked in this place known as the Holy City. They were brought to places like McLeod Plantation on nearby James Island. It was common during the times of enslavement for as many as 10 to 20 people to occupy a space this size. A lifetime of unpaid toil most often ended in an unmarked grave. Their DNA is out there on the ground, and we're walking on that every day. Thanks to science, the Anson Street burial ground is giving up some of its secrets. The process of extracting ancient DNA starts with taking a small sample from the remains, such as a tooth or the bone that surrounds the inner ear. The samples are cleaned, ground into a powder, then dissolved in a solution where human DNA gets separated out. Ancient DNA is really, really degraded DNA. It's highly fragmented, and it comes in very small quantities. The team retrieved at least some genetic material from 31 of the burials, but was only able to get genomes for 18 of the ancestors. By studying minerals from the teeth, researchers were able to tell that most were probably born enslaved. The chemical signatures of the bone indicated that six individuals were likely born in Africa and the rest of the individuals were likely born outside of Africa in Charleston or in North America. There was no clear genomic evidence that any of the ancestors were related. <laughs> Community members also submitted DNA samples, hoping to find a personal connection to one of the ancestors. So far, there have been no matches. But Lachey Oubre says that doesn't matter. The one loving thing about this whole project is they're just family. Their story is our story. When testing was completed, the remains were reinterred at the original site. Nina! Nina! The ancestors Lisa. were also Lisa. given names, Bele. African Bele. ones. The 36 sets of hands will be cast in bronze and become part of a memorial fountain. The ancestor McDaniel will represent is named Fumu, a Congolese word meaning chief. He says he is honored and humbled. I believe that the spirit of them lives on and their hands bless me, they, they guide me. Alan Breed, Associated Press.